Hello everyone. In this small video, I'm going to discuss that how you can use a result type in Surf language. Now, result type was actually introduced in Swift 4.2 or 4, and it allows you to designate a tuple for a success factor and a failure factor. And it can be used anywhere that you want, but mainly I have seen that people are using it when they are performing a web service request because a web service request can, in the success factor, it can give you the result, and in the failure factor, it can give you some sort of an error. So let's say that we have a particular web service URL or an API URL, and you can see the URL right over here, and we want to get all these sessions. So how do we do it using the new Swift uh, type, which is a result type, and I'm calling it new, it's not really new, I mean, it's worth introduced in Swift 4.2, but uh, if you're not using it, try to use it, it's actually very, very handy. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and implement a function called get sessions, and you can see that I'm trying to do all of this stuff in a Swift playground, because if you're trying to learn something, the best way to learn is using something quick like playgrounds. We're gonna pass in the URL, and we will get some sort of a completion back. So the second argument since this is going to be an asynchronous operation, it is going to take some time to finish, so that's why we are passing in a closure over here. Now, this is where you can define your result type. So I can go ahead and say that we will get some sort of a result back, and now you have to provide two different arguments for the generic type, like what do you expect in success? So I'm just gonna say I expect an array of session, and in the case of a failure, I can expect network error. And both of these things don't really exist right now, but we're going to go ahead and create it. Okay, so what exactly is a session? A session will be some sort of a model on which our data, the JSON result, will be mapped. So I can go ahead and create a model to represent a particular session. And you can see over here that our session consists of a title and a speaker. So let's go ahead and create those properties. I can go ahead and create a property called title, which will be string, and I can create a property called speaker, which is also string. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it a decodable. So the decodable actually means that we can take the JSON and we can decode it to this particular structure. And since the, the properties title and the speaker matches exactly like the properties that are in JSON, we, we don't have to tell it that what properties will map what because it's automatically going to find these properties in JSON object and it's going to map one-to-one -one mapping to our session object, okay? So session is done. The next part is the network error. And obviously you can pass in some other kind of an error. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create a network error, network error, which is going to be using or conforming to the error. So if I go ahead and check out the error, this is already obviously a class, which is a, I mean, sorry, a protocol. So I'm conforming to this particular protocol and now I can define some type of, or some cases for the error. So one case can be bad URL. Then we can have a, kind of like a decoding error. Maybe there's a problem and there was a decoding error. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this and see that if the errors kind of go away or not. And let's see what it is saying. Okay, let's go ahead and write it again. Sometimes it's just easier to write these things again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say completion. And we are expecting a result. And the result will be an array of sessions. So array of session. And the second part will be the network error. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say network error if there is any error. All right, and this particular closure is not really going to return anything, and there we go. Okay, so now we have the URL, and we can go ahead and construct the actual URL object. So I can go ahead and say sessions URL, and equals to URL passing in the string, which is passing in this particular URL, else if this is failed, if we are using guardlet to also unwrap it, then we can go ahead and fire the completion handler. And this is where now you can see the power of the result type because we can say failure 
and we can pass in whatever error that we want. So you can see that one of the type of the error that we can pass is the network error because we have explicitly stated that the second argument will be of type network error. So I can go ahead and say bad URL. Much more fluent as you can see, right? Okay, so if the URL is actually correct, then we probably want to go ahead and make that actual request. So URL session dot shared session dot data task with URL. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one. I'm gonna pass in the sessions URL and I will get some sort of a completion handler back. Completion handler is going to give me access to the data. It's going to give me access to a response and error. And I can go ahead and call it using resume. So don't forget to call the resume function. If you don't call the resume, obviously your, your request is never really going to go through. Okay. Now we can go ahead and decode the data. So data equals to data and in this case, if the error is equals to nil, uh, else we can do something over here. Now, we're not really decoding the data over here. We're kind of like unwrapping it. So if there is some error, we can actually go ahead and pass some sort of an error. Uh, we can actually say no data error or something. Now, we don't really have that case. So let's go ahead and build that particular case of no data. And we will return from here. If, however, there is data, then probably we will be interested to decoding it. So JSON decoder dot decode, and we are decoding an array of sessions because if you look at the actual JSON that we are sending, you can see over here the block brackets indicating that the data is actually in the format of uh, an array. So session dot self mean, this is a type that we are decoding to and from the data, which is the data that we received from the response, which is right here. This can actually blow up, so we're just gonna call it with a try question mark. And now we have to assign it to something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create, let's say, sessions. And we can go ahead and fire completion handler, calling it the success, passing in the sessions. Now the sessions over here, you can see that uh, this is going to be an optional. So maybe we can go over here and also change this result type. Instead of uh, an array of session, we can say that this can be an optional. So we can send the optional back. All right. And I think that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, let's go ahead and try to run this. I'm not sure what it is complaining about. Okay, it's complaining about the escaping. Since we're assigning the closure, we have to also go ahead and mark with escaping property attribute, which we have done now. And there is our function. Looks great, right? Now, how do we call this function? That's the fun part, that how do you actually call this function? So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, get sessions. And I do have to pass in a URL. So let's go ahead and copy the URL. We're just gonna copy this part. This service is actually hosted on Glitch, and this is created in Node. Okay. So let's go ahead and pass in the URL slash sessions because that's the actual API URL to get all the sessions. And we are going to get a completion handler back, which is going to give us a result. Now I like to use a trailing closure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do something like this, get the actual result. Now keeping in mind that this result will be of type result, which is right here. So now I can go ahead and perform a switch on the result because there are only two options in the switch or in the result case statement. The first one is the success. And once it is a successful, we will get all the sessions, uh, keeping in mind that the sessions will be optional. So you may have to unwrap them. And I'm gonna go ahead and say sessions. Uh, well, what else can we actually print? So I can simply go ahead and print the sessions. And in other case, in the failure case, we will get the error back. So I'm just gonna say error. And well, we can simply just print out the error. So error.localized description, there we go. Let's go ahead and try to run this and see. Now it is complaining that this is actually not unwrapped. Um, so we can go ahead and unwrap this also if you want to. Uh, it will be a good idea to unwrap this. 
So we can uh, use a guard statement or, or whatever you want. If let sessions equals to sessions, and then we can simply print out sessions, which is the unwrapped version, hopefully, at this point. All right. Let's try to run this and see if it actually goes, makes a request, and displays something. Uh, Sometimes it can take a while since we're running this in uh, the actual uh, playground. Sometimes it can take a while for this to go through and execute everything. And also keep in mind that the server that I'm using, which is a glitch server, it goes to sleep. If you're not using the server, since it's a free account and a free server, it actually does go to sleep. So it can take a little bit of time to get back something from the glitch server. So we're just gonna wait and see if it uh, returns us anything associated with the sessions. If it does, that, then it's great. Uh, and here we go. We actually eventually got back something. You can see that we are printing out all the sessions. So success. So in the next future version of the future code that you write when you're using Swift, try to use the result type. It's really, really handy because it does give you options for a success and a failure. And I think in many different cases, you can, you can use this kind of approach. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. And I will update or I will put this code in a gist uh, and you can download it. Thank you so much.